Hello, it's Spence, the evil genius, and welcome back. This is our second video on how to use our responsive theme and WordPress to create a new and amazing looking site from a mock-up. And we're doing it here live for our new First Web Designer Notes page, which is going to be the place where all of our authors from First Web Designer come together and just sort of lay down the stuff that's cool or interesting but doesn't really have a place on the regular website or on the TV channel. And in the last video, you'll remember that we're using this mock-up as our inspiration for what we're building using our core responsive child theme and a um, bunch of basic tools from the responsive uh, toolkit that we introduced in another video. And in, thus far, we've only been using basically Firebug. I've been using an FTP client and a text editor. And that's all you need with a little bit of basic CSS. All right, so when we last left off, we had f sort of change the look and feel to get the header, the content area, the sidebar, and we were talking about the menu. And in this video, instead of dragging you through an hour of time, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to show you the end result here. And then I'm going to kind of talk about some of the things I did, so it'll be a faster video, but then I'm going to throw in an extra bonus. I'm going to give you the CSS and everything that I did in the video so you can do the same thing at home. So. You could just turn this thing on. You know, how easy is that? And that's kind of the deal. What we're trying to set up here with First Web Designer is to empower you to use our toolkit, see videos like this, and know that, hey, you know what? I can learn it step by step, but I can also jump to the end, and just get right down to it, because now I can use this for the basis of a lot of stuff, whether working with a client or learning how Spence did it, etc. Okay, so let me kind of show you what I did and some of the motivation. And to do that, I want to turn on one of the really cool tools inside of the nightly build of Firefox and the tool is called the Web Developer Responsive Design View. Now why I like this is probably obvious but watch this there's a little tool here and I can just instantly simulate various uh, viewports and orientations right so here's like iPad portrait here's iPad landscape and I can always grab the handle and manually manipulate it as well which is important because I want to pay attention to a few items here okay and you notice nicely inside of my video window, I can show you that. So a couple of things happen. On the way from the inspiration to the final result, remember that the content here is gonna be just us five authors and maybe a wild card or two. So I figured let's focus on just having tabs that let you filter out by the particular author, right? That makes sense. So if Spence got a new video, just crank it out and filter out Spence's stuff and whatever other stuff's going on, I can always go home and get it you know, a live stream from all of us, right? Makes real sense. The sidebar can be a, a wild card too. But because of that, I wanted to take the inspiration of the look and feel of the nav, but rather than being stuck over on the left where it sort of, in my mind, distracts from, you know, the widescreen video display or whatever we're gonna do, I decided to put it up top. But I retained some of those visuals. Like, you notice how this, as we get smaller, deprecates into a really nice grid of three on top of three, much in the same way that our inspiration did. Let's go over here and turn on the toolkit, the design view, much in the same way that our inspiration did, you see? So this deprecates like that, and this deprecates like that. And when I select the various authors, I obviously get the nice similar highlighting effect, right? So you can see where that inspiration comes from, and it's carried through. But the best of all for me is that it really keeps it simple all the way down to the level of an iPhone where, let's see if I go jump there to 320, you know, couldn't be easier. This is gonna be possible for anybody who is looking at our stuff to just crank it out on an iPhone, at a park, on a train, on a bus, on a subway, and just look at the stuff that's cool, right? And that's how it should be for you and your clients also. A couple other things I did different, even though I kept the inspiration for um, much of the you know content area being responsive, I don't have this complexity because this is a little unnecessary. But there's there's a different method of responsive going on. There's a lot of dancing around, and you go from three columns to two columns to one column. I just wanted to keep it simpler. Now I'm going to turn on probably our social sharing elements and things like that. I haven't done that yet. Those will just pop up into the header, so that'll be fine. The sidebar is pretty well the same and the footer has about the same kind of stuff too. So overall, it gives you the same experience, just 
really really simplified down so before I end this video let me show you a couple of things on the back end that I did in order to make this happen now the biggest thing of all was remember when we're working with our responsive child theme it gives us a huge advantage over working with a parent and that is to say if we take any of the parent uh, template files and move a copy to the child we instantly can have the ability to modify that file and overwrite the same parent file name. So let me open the FTP editor here. So we're here inside of the 1WD notes uh, setup and remember under WP content themes we have our parent theme responsive and our child theme responsive lab zip. And now I'm going to go inside of there and you'll notice that I've got a header PHP file which is what I need to use in order to modify the default header from something else. Let me show you what this looks like normally. If I go to our demo, labsecrets.com, demo, responsive, this is kind of what the original menu looks like. It's, you know, not that uncommon. It's a really great starting point because it has a main menu and a subheader, but you know, it's not doing what we were talking about in our uh, final result. And if I put on the responsive web developer view, you'll see, watch, when this deprecates to a smaller viewport, first it does that, and then it goes to this very handy drop-down menu. But see, I didn't like that. I didn't want that effect. So instead, we're doing this. In order to make that happen, I needed to take, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> we're really working without a net. I needed to take this menu and get it out of the header area and get it into the content area. And so here's how I did it. I'm gonna go back now over to my FTP and I opened up the header PHP file. And when I did, the area that I needed to move was this navigation stuff. Now, just to help you see where this came from originally, now I've got it down on line 96. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna revert back all the way to the beginning here, time machine. Originally, it was up on line 81 and it went from line 81 to line 94. And this contains both the primary menu as well as that subheader menu. And what I did is I copied it and then I went down, time machine forward. I went over here to the wrapper. Now the wrapper, including the little hook below it, is what is right at the top of this content area. So let me show you in Firebug. You'll notice here that we've got our outer container, and then we've got our wrapper. And then what I did is I added a little division ID called navigation and then I put it right below. So effectively I, I moved it from up in the header area down into the content area and that's what enables us to do this kind of cool you know adjusting it with the content but yet not affecting the head. And the second thing that I had to do was I added some CSS that effectively hid the different menu uh, change that normally occur right so you see here for example that normally what happens is this is all in a vertical setup and I changed that by making those block elements in line and the CSS looks something like this if you look at the normal ones first of all the text align should be now left and then here you see where it says menu list item display block well I went to in line and then I also set a width and in this case, I had a total of six items. So I could say percentage-wise, if you divided that up, I believe, I'm going from memory, I think it was like 19%. So if I say 19%, oops, with 19%, let's see if I can do this on the fly here. Inline block, there we go. I needed to change it to display, not block, but inline block. And then I made the width 19%. In my case, there was only five. I could see there's more here. So watch what happens if I percentage-wise just keep reducing that. You see the same result can occur. You can actually achieve a point where you, other than this little shop page, you can have one level across. And then I did some other style changes as well. So let's go back over to our real one. And you can see if I inspect this, that the list items actually well in this case when it's smaller like this the list items have a width of 31 percent if i stretch it out all the way and i refresh it again you'll see they're probably i think 19 percent like i said let's see list items oh 16.12 percent 
okay I added some background color which is the gray I put the little border with which is the darker double D and then I also picked up the fact that I wanted to have the active item be white with a left border of orange right and so that shows up right here home menu current page item that means the one that's selected and it says you know background is all white okay I also set it up so that if it is the current one selected it's going to have that left hand border you can see that here menu list item hover current page a or current menu item a that's three different instances where that could occur we say you know left hand border five pixels orange all right next is i made a change to the layout on the left side remember when we were working before we had this sort of area we left alone well that was easy enough to get rid of because all i needed to do was inspect with firebug i just took the content area and I made sure that that went all the way to the left. And let me give you the exact value here. We ended up with a width of 63.957% in this full width size. And the widget area ended up being about a third. So that turned out to be 27%. And then I wanted to make sure that the container that everything this was in had a left margin of zero or padding of zero, margin of zero, and it was 100%, right? So you can see here, watch, if I don't have that max width of 100%, we still have the legacy of the left column. So I made it max width 100, no margin on the left, no padding on the left. So a lot of this stuff will be apparent when I send you the file or you get the file from the show notes here, you'll be able to deconstruct it a little bit and end up with a result that hopefully gives you the understanding of how some of these little tricks were done. What's really cool to me though is then we look at the way this turns out and it's got a really specific purpose, a really great color scheme that we like, but you know, it came from the same source. It came from this here. And we've been able to do literally dozens and dozens of different customers' looks and feels all from the same set of tools using, again, nothing more than a text editor, the responsive parent, the lab zip child theme, and a couple other things. So I hope you've been inspired. I hope you've learned a few things. And uh, if you like this, please comment in the show notes what you liked, what you didn't like, what you understood, what you didn't. It's my intention, along with the things we've got coming up, for you to take this kind of stuff and now go out and find a real live paying customer with it from the places we are going to suggest you do it. Because at the end of the day, even if you use it for yourself, this is the kind of work that there are hundreds and thousands even of people waiting to have done for them. And previously, they'd have nowhere to go except somebody that's nameless, faceless in a large agency or a design firm. And yet you as a freelancer could be doing this stuff literally this weekend. I hope this has given you some inspiration and I look forward to hearing from you and hearing about your successes and your questions and everything else. And once again, as always, this is Spence, the evil genius. And I'll see you next time.